I think one of the reasons why some people have so much trouble with faith, and I am not saying my faith is so good or so well or at 100%, no. But I believe one of the reasons why some people have trouble in faith faith in Jesus Christ is uncertainty. Like not knowing what is going to happen next. Let's say you prayed about something. Let's say you are going to run out of food. And let's say at that time, you are living for Jesus Christ. You may pray about it, but you may begin doubting. Like, it has been a day and I still have no food. So, some thoughts in your mind may come to you. Hey, I may have to do, I may have to do some bad things to obtain food, like I may have to prostitute myself. I may have to steal or wrongfully manipulate people to get money for food. I may have to lower my morals to get food. Let me say this. And I am not perfect at it. I try to do what is right. I really do. At the same time, when I get into trouble, I pray about it. Most times, I would say. Sometimes I, I may fast. Either way, ultimately, what I do, most of the time, I would say, I wait on God. I wait. And I wait. But while I am waiting, most of the time, I would say, I am praying. Honestly, if you ask me, I believe waiting on God is easier than trying to do things in your own way, if you understand what I mean by that. If you are planning to do what is wrong, I guess, to try to make things better in your life. I think that is more difficult than waiting on Jesus Christ. I was reading in the Bible with someone yesterday, and we are in the book of Acts. I believe we are at the part when Stephen was in front of the Sanhedrin. I guess explaining his case. And I believe he was speaking about in the time of Moses about, um, I may not have it all the way straight, but pretty much Moses was trying to lead the people with God's help, but the people were rejecting him pretty much, in a way rejecting him. And I told my Bible reading partner, I believe one of the reasons why 
Yes, I think in the scripture it was saying something about like their heart was to go back into Egypt again. Even though they were slaves, and I believe they were, I think they were slaves, and I believe they were being oppressed. Now, the very interesting thing about that, when they were being led by God, things were easier for them right but because i believe because of uncertainty not knowing what is going to happen next i believe they wanted to go back to what was familiar to them even though their life was more difficult in egypt and it kind of made me think of how we are now we may take a difficult route because it is familiar to us. I think, I believe that is one of the reasons. I believe one of the reasons some people have so much trouble with faith, they may not know what is going to happen next. I think people like, I think some people like control. Do you understand what I mean? Like, I think some people want to dictate, in a way, step by step what is going to happen. But when you are living for Jesus Christ, if you are trusting in him, yes, I believe you can tell him what you want, but you can't really control what is going to happen in every step of the way. You don't really know what is going to happen next. Please listen to what I am saying. For me, and for the person I read the Bible with, for both of us, waiting on God is easier than trying to do it the other way. For instance, let's say I am having trouble and I don't know what to do. I believe much of the time I pray about it and I wait. I believe the enemy will give us so many thoughts to do what is wrong. Now, some people may fall for it and do what is wrong, and I believe they will find more things get worse. There is a person, I can't really say no, but let me not talk about that. But anyways, I pray that this makes sense. I think the concept of now, how can I say this? I believe waiting on God is easy, but at the same time difficult as in Like, what is more difficult? Cutting down trees, clearing a pathway, doing this, doing that, or waiting for God to clear the pathway for you, make a pathway for you, then for you to walk on it. Not saying that you don't have to do anything, but I believe things become more effortless, in a sense, if you wait on God. Do you understand what I am trying to say? It may be difficult 
believing in Jesus Christ, waiting for him to honor your prayer or to for you to see him doing what you ask, if I am saying that correctly. But if you are patient, listen now, there is something that me and another person has prayed for maybe for two years or more. And I believe it is being answered now. But how long have we been praying for it? Maybe two or three years now. Yes, there were times, I guess, when we became discouraged. Yes, there were times when I think we or I gave up on it, kind of. Yes. But off and on, I guess I can say, we were praying about it for about two or three years. I think some people expect their prayers to be answered like boom, 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 boom. Now, some prayers may get answered in that way. So if your if all of your prayers won't be answered in that type of way, are you telling me you are going to give up on God? Are you telling me that? Are you? Let's say, you know, I think for many women, I think many women want to get married. Okay. Some men may want to get married as well. But let's say you are a bitter, hateful, angry, vengeful, spiteful person and you are asking God to get married now. Okay. Let's say you do get married. Like, how are you going to be toward your spouse? How are you going to be toward your husband? How are you going to be toward your wife? If you are hateful, spiteful, vengeful, and more stuff, how are you going to treat your spouse? I guess in some cases, God may marry a person like that or similar to it to a person, but how are you going to treat your spouse? You are not, I would say, emotionally and probably spiritually mature yet, right? So if you were to get married, it would probably end in divorce, right? So probably God may want you to get married, but maybe you aren't spiritually, emotionally mature yet, right? What if your 10-year-old asks you to drive? like to give him or her the keys and drive. Like with you not being in the car, but for you to give them the keys and let them drive, would you do it? Now, if you are a responsible person, you probably, <laughs> you probably would not do it, why? Probably that child is not ready to drive on their own, right? Like that child may not even be mature enough to drive, right? So if you give that child keys to drive a car, that child may kill him or herself, right? Please listen to what I am trying to say. 
what you are praying for, you may not be ready for it now. But don't stop praying for it. Maybe God is in the process of maturing you for what you want. What is my point? Okay. Pray for what you want. Don't give up on it. But you may not have it right now because of your maturity level. Maybe it is too low. Myself, when I was, do I want to say an age? <laughs> when, when I was younger, at a certain age, it is a good thing I did not enter into something which I am not going to tell you what it is. It is not good. Let me say it like this. When I was younger, it is good that I chose not to have kids at a certain age. I don't have kids now anyway. Why? I believe it is good that I did not have kids at a certain age. Why? I was immature. I was selfish. I was mean. I did not really care about certain things and stuff like that. I would have been a horrible father. Horrible. But if I were to have kids now, I probably would be so much better. So, I believe God wants to answer our prayers depending on what it is but you probably aren't spiritually mature yet you probably aren't emotionally mature yet because think about yourself now and I am not trying to tell you to look down upon yourself but I believe now you can force you can force how can I say it? You can go, I believe you can go out of God's will and get married. But how is it going to turn out? If you are rude, if you are mean, if you are hateful, if you are selfish, if you are vindictive, if you are spiteful, how is it going to turn out if you go out of God's will and get married. If you aren't willing to go by the rules, biblical rules of how a man and woman should act in a marriage, why do you want to get married? If you aren't willing to love your wife, if you aren't willing to I mean, if you aren't willing to love the woman when she becomes your wife or do right by her, why get married? If you aren't willing to submit to the man and do other stuff the Bible tells us to do, why get married? Because everyone else is doing it? Some people, because your mother wants you to get married. Let me stop here. God bless you.